In this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, command pattern. And I wrote a lot of notes, so if my eyes just kind of go a little bit down here, I just want to make sure it's not too distracting. But first, before I get into the code, I just wanted to talk a bit about uh, the purposes of this pattern, because I think this pattern is not conceptually too hard to understand. We're just putting commands and requests into their own classes and their objects. I think the hardest thing to really understand and grasp is, well, why would you um, do that in the first place? Because sometimes adding on a pattern such as this can kind of add more complexity to some application or some software or situation. And it kind of is a little bit harder to think about, well, why would we want to have all these uh, commands or requests into their own classes or objects? So the first thing I think that's important to understand is when we use this pattern, we're able to, if we're able to encapsulate requests and commands into their own classes and objects, then we can create a queue or collect all of these requests into a specific uh, order through a data structure, an array or something of that manner. And thus we can kind of control the way that those commands are being processed. This is important when we think about concurrency, when commands are being executed, maybe at the same time through uh, multiple users. And so if we have them all set in some queue, we can control the order in which they're being executed. We can also control um, if we have like a priority queue, if certain commands take precedence over other commands. And so that's one important reason why we would use this pattern. Another important thing to think about when we talk about this pattern is also thinking about the execute function within this pattern. Sometimes there might be a reason why you want to execute some command or request at a later time and not necessarily execute that command immediately. Maybe there is a specific context or maybe there's a specific situation and you don't need to execute that command immediately. Maybe the commands need to um, depend on other commands. So once another command in a certain order is being place, then you can execute all of those commands at the same time. And so because we're able to have that additional function of uh, execute on every single command, we're able to create these very complex relationships and have a way that we can kind of predict um, maybe sequences of of actions that happen, and thus we can execute sequences of actions that might end up overcomplicating our code if we tried to hard code it out. But through the through encapsulating all of those commands and execute and being able to have those commands in their own queue, we're able to, in a way, uh, have those really complicated relationships and have that com complex sequences of behaviors and actions as well. Uh, the third thing, too, is when I was reading... Um, the Gang of Four, I think this is an important part that I don't think a lot of people bring up and that a lot of people talk about this pattern and understand that you have execute and undo and redo. And the Gang of Four brings up an important point is that once uh, some application or, or software or some program, once it scales out and you have so many commands, requests that are being executed, undo, redo so many times, it's inevitable that there is going to be some error that's, that will acclimate and maybe that will cause some problems within your uh, application. And so having a command encapsulate all of the information that it needs to execute some particular uh, behavior and at the same time having that command and class also being able to undo that behavior, you're able to contain a lot more of the context, variables, information that you might need to return some, some software or something to its original state. So I just wanted to go through the beginning. This part is a little long, but I think it's because 
the example is a little bit more straightforward and won't need too much explanation, but um, we'll just get right into the example. We have our example here. This is, we're going to just imagine that this is a database. This is our own database. It doesn't have any locks. It doesn't have any mechanisms. So we're only implementing an insert function into this database. So if we go here, we can insert user one, we can insert user two, we can insert user three. And so we're able to just continuously insert information into our database. And we can also undo every command through the actions. So if we inserted user three again, let's, let's do insert user five, if we inserted that, it would just remove that as well without interfering. So it only removes the last command and so it's just a very straightforward database, only inserting elements into the database. So going into our code here, we're going to look at just basically, uh, we're using these objects here, the data object that contains username information. We have our in database as an interface, which is going to have the insert and delete. And so here we have the application database that implements this database. A very important note to know about this class is that originally we would be using this class to insert and delete information without the command pattern. So as a user, we'd probably just be using this class by itself, inserting and removing some, some data. And so this might be the end all but we're gonna use the command pattern using the execute undo. And each of these commands here that are located within this class, the insert and delete that we're acting on, we're going to encapsulate those requests itself. And each of these requests will contain its own private instance of the database and also requ require the uh, information or argument that's needed to insert and delete. So for your context or for your situation, it might be different. You might not need an instance, you might not need an argument to execute or undo some, some uh, function within this class, uh, but this is the part, you do need an instance of of the of the class that you're acting on that's that's uh completely necessary and then here we have in our command pattern the invoker and this is what is going to call on or it's going to use those commands which are now classes it keeps those commands in their own queue we have it as an array this could be anything. It could be a queue, priority queue. It could be a graph. It could be a, a linked list. I don't know. But it, it, the most important thing to understand is that now that we have this invoker, we're able to keep track of all of those commands as they're being executed in a set order. And we're also able to push those commands onto this list. and we're also able to execute or not. We don't have to execute those uh, commands themselves because that we have an execute on the interface uh, command, we're able to control when we want to execute those commands as well, as well as the undo. And the undo, all it requires is just taking the uh, last command from the command list and just simply calling the undo function on, on that. And if you were doing redo, I've seen some examples of people having a redo uh, structure as well, like a redo array. That way you can keep track of uh, the commands that you undoed and just pop them off the undo, put them in redo. That way you can uh, keep track of both both commands. So that could be something you, you can do. And because we have the invoker here, we're able to 
every time I call this function, so this function is being called when I submit, I'm able to uh, call that uh, command from, from the uh, invoker through, through this pattern, being able to push those commands to a command list and being to execute it through this, uh, through this design pattern. And undo, I'm basically able to just undo it on the invoker. And the invoker will go to the command list and will undo it from the last command that's being called. So just very quick, quickly, understanding these, these uh, command classes themselves, these are just very rudimentary, basic examples, but these can be as complex or complicated as needed to be, and these can interact with each other if they needed to as well. So once an application starts to have more complicated features or uh, complicated relationships between maybe entities or, or behaviors themselves where you need to execute a very specific set of commands or need to execute a very particular um, set of commands under a particular set of conditions, we can use the execute and undo function since they have their own class and we can create more variables here as needed. Like if I needed, um, if I needed to have some additional ID information or if I needed to have the username then once I execute, then I could say this ID is equal to data, um, data dot ID. This um, username is equal to this dot data dot username. So we're able to keep those additional information because um, maybe you need to have more information on every time you execute. Maybe you need to keep track of the time or you maybe need to keep track of um, additional f features that aren't necessarily included in your arguments. You're able to include those as variables within your uh, command classes themselves. Okay, so the, just the last thing I want to note for the end of this video is just explaining that I don't, necessarily think that this is one of those absolute patterns that are completely necessary because sometimes your context or situation doesn't really need you to add this much um, abstraction or have to have you uh, decouple this much from from the way that you're kind of like acting on to some object or something where you don't want to directly uh, send requests or commands to some some entity itself. I think the biggest case for this is thinking about that queue, needing to know the commands are being uh, executed in a particular order or pattern. Um, like video games, you might need to know that once a certain amount of actions has been called, you want to do some bigger overarching um, thing like have a boss come out or something so you need to keep track of specific orders of behaviors or actions or commands or requests um, another thing to think about too is a lot of uh, examples on iot's like remotes menus that you need to have those specific requests being in a in a log or a way that you can know that those requests are being uh, coupled to some specific entity itself. So without um, knowing that this turns on this light, this turns on the garage, shuts down, undo. And so you're just making some remote or menu, you're simplifying the behavior because when you look at that um, invoker class that's calling on those different requests, you can easily identify what entity to what command is being called on. So that's another reason you might use this pattern, but I think for a majority of other cases, um, it might not be crucial for you to really try to abstract your application or situation 
to this uh, pattern. But that's it. I hope that was helpful. And yeah, code and all the information should be uh, in the description below. All right. Thank you.